Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Gerald. I'm going to be doing a little isopod unboxing here. Just received this in the mail here. Just picked it up off my porch. Um, let's see. This shipment was something I obtained off of the US Invertebrate Auction on Facebook. Let me go ahead and pop this open. All right, so this is supposed to be a 30 count of Armadillidium maculatum zebra isopods. And here they are. Got a label there, isopod chick off of US invertebrate auctions. Let's go ahead and get this open. You can see on the cup there, 30 count zebra. And judging based right off the top there, they're doing all right. They survived the trip. It was two day priority shipping. Packed nicely. Some carrot in there for food. Let's see if I can get one of those out of there. There we have a little Armadillidium maculatum zebra isopod. All right, let's get these guys set up in their new enclosure. I'll be right back with that. Okay, so for the care of these guys, I've got them going to a 16 quart tub. Um, and for substrate, I'm using a mixture of organic topsoil made out of recycled forest leaf litter. I've also mixed in some coconut coir, um, sphagnum moss, peat moss, things like that. Also got a little bit of charcoal here that I'm going to be adding in as well. Let's see. So that is the base substrate. Let's go ahead and mix that in. Uh, this substrate here is just lightly dampened, but mostly uh, with some dry areas. From what I understand, uh, Armadillidium maculatum prefers it with good ventilation, lightly moistened, not, not too damp. Um, I'm going to be having a moisture side as a moisture treat for them. Um, let's see. I also have a, a sort of care package here from Isopod Diner on Facebook. So. This is packed full of great leaf litters, wood, things like that. If you live in a suburb and you have, you don't quite have ready access to organic pesticide-free biodegradable things like this, then um, it's great to order. So I've got this from Isopod Diner on Facebook. Tons of leaf litter here. So I'm gonna go ahead and spread that on top. I have some leaf litter mixed into the substrate as well. Um, this is great because uh, isopods really just live off of the leaf litter, li live off of all the organic biodegradable things in the substrate. So just a little bit more in there. Perfect, that looks good. Let's see. Along with our provided leaf litter from isopod diner, I've got a little bit of oak here, some dried decaying oak. That was kind of a little sample. Some extra little things here. Uh, sweet gum tree seed pod. 
Um, these break down real slowly, but the isopods like to hide in and around it. It's great for the babies to hide in there as well. We also have a few acorn caps. Again, great for them. Great for babies to hide in and around. A little bit of other stuff in there like bark with lichen. I'm also going to be adding some more cork bark and things like that in there as well. As soon as I cut mine up, I've got some, but I need to cut it up to size. So that's good. And I'm going to spray one side down because again, they do like good ventilation, but I'm going to have one side of it a little moister as a moisture treat for them. Be sufficient for now and then again on the topic of ventilation for their lid I've got a good size ventilation hole cut uh, just glued down with a hot glue gun and so let's go ahead and get these isopods in here And again, this is supposed to be a 30 count, uh, which it does look like we've got at least 30 in here. So that's awesome. They all survived the trip. It was two day priority shipping through USPS. So that's great. And then we've got, it's really hard to tell, but this is, they're mixed sized. Uh, it looks like juveniles, the sub adults, things like that. getting most of this substrate out of this cup, and then we'll be able to see a bit more of these isopods. And so clearly, as their name suggests, their zebra isopods is their common name. They've got black with white stripes all across their backs. Very great isopods for beginners. I'm going to be breeding these and using them in my crested gecko terrariums as a cleanup crew and then maybe later on selling some off or trading them off things like that Here's a really good look at them. That one there is a bit lighter. I'm pretty sure it's going to darken up as it ages, but if not, it's a nice chocolate brown zebra isopod. But uh, judging by the looks of the rest of the culture, they're all going to be pretty dark. Okay, so those are going in here. I'm going to gently get them off of this paper towel here. And then this tub maybe is a little bit big for this culture to start off. I uh, kind of anticipated them being uh, a little bit bigger. I wasn't, I'm just not too familiar with this species yet as this is my first time owning them. Um, but they'll be able to find each other quite well, especially due to their numbers. Like I said, there's a 30 count of them in here, so it shouldn't be much of a problem. Um, and then they'll be breeding quite well. And then the size will kind of accommodate their, their breeding habits. Oh yeah, there's some really little ones in here too. That's always nice to have different sizes, different age ranges, keep the cycle fresh. Okay guys. I'm just gonna put the rest of it down here because there's some small ones on there that I don't wanna hurt too much. So leave it there. 
Um, so like I said, they'll be feeding mostly on the substrate, the leaf litter, the organic decaying matter in here. Um, but aside from just leaf litter, um, you can do supplemental food, which I personally use Rapashi's Morning Wood. Uh, it's originally a fish food for uh, like armored catfish, things like that. But uh, a lot of hobbyists decide to use it for their isopods, and they've even come up with this isopod uh, catered label there. So that's kind of cool. And then aside from morning wood, if you don't have access to that, I also like to use fish food, dried fish flakes, things like that. Um, it's also good to supply a calcium source, um, which I usually do in the form of boiled eggshells. A lot of people like to use cuddle bone. They both work great. Looks like we've got just the last of our isopods on this piece of paper here. All right, buddy. Okay, great. So with that being said, those are my zebra isopods that we've unboxed today. Um, I also have cultures of uh, Porcelionides prunosis powder orange isopods as well as Porcelio lavis dairy cow isopods right up here in my rack and there's some millipedes there but uh, all of the, these isopods are bred uh, mostly for cleanup crews in my crested gecko vivariums uh, and uh, also just for really as micro pets maybe even for trade for sale later in the future but uh yeah, if you've made it this far, thank you for watching. Um, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns about setup here, feel free to leave a comment. I'm very open-minded. I'm really still learning about all these things, so please feel free to leave comments, um, and I'll get back to you on those. But, you know, if you've made it this far, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it.